We're just going to uh, begin this morning with some songs of praise and worship. Um, this is Mercies by uh, Matt Redman. Sorry, we're just having a bit of a, a festival practice here with the things going wrong. <laughs> just missing the mic there. So, um, as I was 
uh, putting these songs together through the, um, through the week, I was actually looking for a different song um, uh, called, called Worthy, but this one kind of cropped up. And um, I actually found myself kind of picking up the mel melody through the week, repeating it, and, and it, it reminded me of my identity as a Christian. Uh, this is a song called Worthy uh, for, <laughs> for all the people down at Worthy Farm. <laughs> was my cross you bore, so I could live in your freedom you died for. Now my life is yours, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise, worthy is your name. Now my shame is gone I stand amazed At your love undeniable Your grace goes on and on And I will sing of your goodness forevermore Worthy is your name Jesus You deserve Now in the heavens, as your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens, as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens, as your glory fills this place. Fills his place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all Worthy is your name, worthy is your name, 
I'm just going to finish with uh, Ferris Lord, Lord Jesus. This is a, a kind of a more contemporary take on uh, an old hymn. Um, and it's on a beautiful day to, like today. It feels really appropriate. <laughs> There is Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, thou, O God, and man of soul. Thee will I cherish, thee will I honor, your my soul. Hand over to the steward. Who's Katie this morning? Good morning, everybody. Um, everyone here and everyone watching from home. Um, just a couple of quick things this morning. Um, just to let you know, there are lots of new and interesting books out in the bookcase in the um, foyer. So if anyone wants to go and have a look, please feel free. Um, and secondly, we also don't have anybody on the tea and coffee rota this morning or for the foreseeable. <laughs> if anyone wants to offer to do it today, please. <laughs> Mum's a bit. There we go. Thank you. And that just leaves me to hand over to David. Thank you. Two, one, one, there we go. Good morning, everybody. Good to be with you this morning. And uh, we've got the earth circulating and... Um, 
the, uh, the Spirit is here and uh, circulating as well. Uh, so receive the cool air, receive the refreshing of the Holy Spirit as we come together and uh, worship and praise of God. So um, those of you who stand, uh, if you want to stand now, and uh, as we sing and praise God and bring our worship before him. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain, firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me.
praise you that we can stand here this morning in this place to sing these songs, these songs which are actually songs of freedom because you in your son Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary broke for us the power of sin and death. You released us into this life of, of so much possibility because this life is the life that you give. And as we stand here before you, we, we say to you again, O oh God, come and meet us here in this place and bring to us the joy of the presence of your amazing abiding love. Come and fill us with that sense of, of grace, the knowledge that we are forgiven, we are set free in Jesus Christ. Come and fill us with a a sense of hope that because of you all things can be good because you are the good God the one who walks beside us day by day the shepherd the one who restores our soul and so we trust in you the Lord's my shepherd I'll not want he may me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. 
Oh, I think I'll stand just here. <laughs> um, Harbour this morning. Um, I'm sure there's lots of exciting things going on. Uh, uh, I don't know what's happening this morning, so it'll be a surprise. You'll have to come and tell me all about it uh, afterwards. No telling tales, okay, until afterwards. So those of you going into Harbour, do you want to come and join me here for a minute? Come and stand up here with me. Come on, come on, Evie. Oh, do the offer tree first. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do the offer tree first, and then everybody who's in harbour will be stood here anyways at the end of the offer tree, won't they? Good plan, yes. I know what I'm doing, really. Do you want to hold this one? Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for these uh, many gifts that you give to us. And so we bring you these gifts of money uh, as an offering, a thanks offering for all the goodness and mercy that we receive from you day by day. We pray now for our, our harbor as they go uh, and uh, do some exciting things, learning more about you and what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. So bless them as they go in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I'll take those so you don't run off with them, okay? <laughs> right, off you go. We'll see you a bit later. So those of you who have been um, here through, throughout June will know that uh, we've been following um, certain parts of the, the book of Revelation. Um, it's Bible month, uh, June, and uh, we're trying to look at the whole of Revelation in one month, which is pretty tricky. Um, and so we've been given different sections to look at, and obviously it's the last Sunday in, uh, in June, so we're right at the end of uh, Revelation now, and uh, the last few chapters. Uh, so I've picked out uh, one of my favorite parts of the whole, well, the whole Bible, actually, but certainly the book of Revelation, um, the first few verses of chapter 21, and Jim's reading that for us. He's got himself as far in as he possibly can. <laughs> well done. So the reading is taken from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look! God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, 
for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Amen. There's so much in that, that picture, that image that John had there. One of the um, most extraordinary parts, one of the most hope-filled parts is uh, God will be with us. We will be with God. And that, if we didn't have anything else, I think that would be enough. Just those few words. Because that is the essence of, of hope. It's something that is, is in the future and to a large degree, is it also in the present? But actually we're waiting for that future full realization of what that looks like. So I thought we'd think about hope a little bit this morning. So at the end of this service, I hope that when I get out into the car park and put the key in the ignition of my car and turn it, it will start. I hope that will be the case. And I've got good reason to expect that will be the case because it's never not been the case. It's always started whenever that I've done that. So that, I think, is a reasonable hope. Would you agree? Good. And I hope the same is true for your car as well, if you've come in your car. I also hope one day to live in a house by the sea and not have any, well, let's say, close neighbors. I don't mind having neighbors as long as they're not too close. Uh, and I'd like to have some animals and a, a view of the sea and an easy walk down to the beach. So I can just walk down in the morning and have a swim and watch the sunset in the evening. I hope for that. But I don't expect that to happen, to be honest. You never know. You never know. But that is a hope, that's a, that's a longing, that is a, a dream, it's something that is perhaps a bit more wistful rather than rooted in any sense of you know, a concrete foundation, any sense of it might actually become real. If I win the lottery, it will be a miracle, mainly because I don't play the lottery, okay? So, you know, it's not going to happen. You know, I don't think that is likely to happen. But I can still hope, can't I? The reading, as I said, from Revelation is a hope for all of us. It's a hope for us to turn to in times of uh, difficulty, in times of trouble, in times of worry. God is making all things new. This mess that we see around us day by day will not stand forever. There will be a new heaven, a new earth. Perfect, just as God intended all things to be from the very beginning. And God will be with us. We will be his people. There is something there that says, hold on. Now you'll have heard me say before, and I'll say it again, I'm not of the mind of it doesn't matter what's going on in this life, we just need to ignore it and wait until we die and then everything will be fine. That is not what I think the Christian church is all about or should be all about. That is not what the Christian faith is all about. Jesus wouldn't have bothered doing half the things he did if that was the case. He began that process while he was here uh, on earth and he calls upon us to continue that process of, of this recreation, of this new heaven and this new earth, beginning here and now and completed when he returns. And so this hope that we read in Revelation is something for us to turn to in times of trouble, but also to live by as well, to depend upon. If there is no hope in Jesus Christ, there's no point in anything that we do. There's no point in 
in singing any of those songs. There's no point in, in getting excited and clapping along to Happy Day because if there is no hope, it wasn't a happy day. It was a pretty rubbish day, actually. But the hope is that in the cross, Jesus started that change. That change from decay and death in all we see to life and life eternal. And that began on that very day. There's a clear statement by God in his word that he will make all things new. Just think about your all things at the moment. Your heartache. Your pain. Your sense of being let down. your failures, your weaknesses. Jesus is talking about making all things new and that includes each one of us. And that is part of what the work of the Holy Spirit is about. Living within us, renewing us from within. That work of sanctification changing our, our mourning into dancing, changing our despair into hope, changing our loss into reward. God promises us to make all things, promises to us that he will make all things new. And so this, this present age, with all its pain and suffering, won't last forever will not last forever. And so I think this gives us as Christians inspiration to join in God's work of renewal. Don't sit back and wait for God to come. Roll up your sleeves. Call upon the Holy Spirit to empower you, to equip you, to enable you to go and to work alongside what God is doing already to bring that day more quickly. So hope for us is a confident expectation in God. It's not a wistful dream. It's not a fairy story. It's not a fantasy. It's not a forlorn hope. It is a confident expectation in what God can do, will do. And why do we have hope? Because of our experience of God. I'm going to ask you a question a little bit later on. I know you love it when I ask you questions, so I thought I'd ask you one today. Normally I ask you, where have you seen God recently? And some people come and share with us, where have you seen God recently? This week I'm going to ask you that same question, but a little bit differently. When have you experienced that assurance of hope in God? And that can be from any time in your life, Okay. I don't want your life story, please. Just a, a brief story about when you've experienced the realis realization of that hope in God. So be thinking about that, but also perhaps listen as well. Um, we've personally experienced God's blessing, his mercy, his love. And so our hope is not a wish, it's not a daydream. It is, as I say, this confident expectation. So our hope is in God. Our hope is not in science or technology or evolution or progress or human nature or the nation. Our hope is not in any of those things. Many of those things can be good and fruitful and helpful, but ultimately our hope is only in God. That hope in God is about today, the possibilities, what might happen if we put our trust in God? What might happen if we open God's word and read? What might happen if we pray more? That is a, an expectation, a hope in God. 
It's also a hope for tomorrow and next week and that forever tomorrow as well. Christian hope is about what God is going to accomplish when Christ returns. The end of my life, the end of of human history, is not the end, therefore, because that hope that we have. And that's one of the things I think has been been good to remind ourselves when we've looked at this book of Revelation of these last few weeks. There are pictures of what heaven looks like. And one of my favorites there, I think I was mentioned this last time I was here, you know, this idea of all the the saints and angels gathered around the throne and giving that eternal praise and glory to God. This is a part of us because God is with us and we are his people. This is a common theme throughout the Bible. God is with his people. This last couple of weeks, uh, I've been with the Open the Book team in, uh, in school, and uh, we've been uh, doing the story of, of Moses and the Exodus and, and all that sort of thing, and, and a couple of weeks ago, um, we were in, in school, and uh, I don't know why they cast me, but they cast me as the wicked Pharaoh. I don't know why. But anyways, I was the, the king of Egypt, and um, I was uh, pursuing the Israelites through the, uh, um, the Red Sea. And the children of the school who were sat on the floor were the sea. And uh, Moses came along with his, his staff and he banged it on the floor and the sea parted for the Israelites to pass through. Now we'd, we sort of like talked about this before we started the assembly and we said to the children, now when the Israelites get through to safety, the Egyptians are going to come and... and uh, pursue them and try and bring them back into slavery and you're going to be the sea and, and come and sweep them away so, so that uh, you know, they can't catch them. And as soon as the last Israelites had exited the sea, before me and the Egyptian army could even get into it, they were boom, like that. So quick, they understood what God was doing. Perhaps wouldn't have said it like that. But they understood from God's story that God is the one who rescues. God is the one who, as we call upon him, will bring that sea back so that the enemy cannot pursue us. And this is the story of all scripture. And we're seeing right at the end of this this wonderful book that is the Bible. We're seeing right at the end, God reiterates his promise that is there on the very first page and is there on the very last page as well. Both Peter and and Paul writing in the New Testament, they set out a theology of hope for us. Paul especially is a great theologian, but Peter's writing, if you've never read Peter's letters, go and read them, they're they're fabulous. And there is one particular bit in 1 Peter that says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Peter's telling us that the basis of Christian hope, our hope, your hope, is in the fact of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's not in anything else. It's not in anything that we can do. It's not in how hard we pray. It's not how loudly we sing. It's not how much we serve. It is only in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then all those other things follow on from that. Our hope is in the fact of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
So in Jesus, we have a hope for today, a hope for tomorrow, and a hope for all eternity. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. For his great work of salvation upon the cross that is the source of our hope. Help us to keep our eyes fixed upon the risen Jesus so that we might walk with him day by day in the sure knowledge of that hope, that promise that is yours to us, that you are our God and we are your people. And so in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to uh, sing again, and then um, I'm going to ask you that question about, what was the question again? Where have you experienced God's faithfulness? Where have you known that hope realized in your life? And that could be from any time in your life, okay? It doesn't have to have been in the last few days and weeks or so. This song is, uh, again, a song that, that echoes these words that we've, we've been talking about, about hope. Your face in every sunrise, the colors of the morning are inside your eyes. The world awakens in the light of the day. I look up to the sky and say, You're beautiful. Oh. Your power in the moonlit night Where planets are in motion And galaxies are bright We are amazed in the light of the stars It's all proclaiming who you are Your beauty
I see your face, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. I see your face, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. I see your face, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. I don't know whether I've ever told you this story or not. Some of you will have heard this. <coughs> um, so I can't think how long ago it was that um, my dad um, and uh, his stepmom, Caroline, came to uh, worship with us one Sunday morning. Um, must be sort of like four or five years ago, something like that. And, um, and we sang that song, Beautiful. My dad didn't know it at all. He'd never heard it before. But he absolutely loved it. And um, he was saying to me afterwards, what's that song, what's that song? And uh, so he found it, and he got it on his, um, I can't believe I'm saying this about my dad, he got it on his, on his uh, iPad, and, um, and he used to play it in the house. And um, my, my sister was uh, talking to him one day, he said, oh, you should have heard this song we sang at, at uh, R. Dave, that's what he called me, R. Dave's church, and uh, it's called Beautiful, and she rang me up and said, are you singing James Blunt songs at your church? <laughs> <laughs> Some of you will get that, others won't, don't worry. But the thing is, um, he, as uh, many of you know, he died a couple of years ago, and he wrote his own eulogy, typically, and, um, but he included part of those words in there. When we arrive on eternity shore, where death is just a memory and tears are no more. And it was just like that, expression of hope and also the realization of that hope as well. So that's my, my story. And I managed to hold it together as well. So where have you seen, where have you known that realization of God's hope, promise in your life? All right, thank you. Yes, um, I'd like to share a hope that I've had and I've prayed and I hope Andrew won't mind me sharing this. But I have hoped and prayed that we see Andrew back with musicians and coming out of the cafe just a week, maybe a week ago, and he said to me, I'm coming back <laughs> to church. And I thought, oh, thank you, Lord. That's my hope and my trust in you that we see Andrew back with us. And this morning, it's rejoiced my heart to see Andy back with us, not only with us, but it's smiling. Playing as well. yeah. So Lovely. thank you, Lord. Thank you. It is a happy day, yes. Two happy days, at least. <laughs> Unbelievable. Happy day. <laughs> yes. Keep, keep it going as long as you can. Yes. Milk it forward. You're right. talking, 
Yes, settle down, settle down. You're talking about something that happened when you really knew that God was with you. Um, 1974, we came home, and my brother met me on the dock down at uh, Southampton and told me that he had multiple sclerosis. In those days, there was very little hope for people who had that disease, and we knew that sometime fairly soon he wouldn't be with us anymore. And I was really struck by it. And I wondered where God was that day. And it was a Saturday, and the next day, Sunday, I came to this church. It was, the door was there in those days. And I think I sat near the back. And the local preacher who was here was preaching on the psalm, the, the, uh, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I can't really remember much of what he said, but that verse has stayed with me, and that was God mm. speaking to me in my trouble, mm. giving me hope yep. that I did have. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Colin. It's very personal, but... Any of you ever have a fear of death, don't have a fear of death, please. If you've given your life to Jesus, do not fear. I had the privilege in 20, excuse me, I might break down a bit. 2019, I watched my dear dad go home to him. The amazing thing was, I was talking to the manager of the home the night before, and she said, I don't know if you can have time to actually say goodbye. Thankfully, it was a year before the COVID broke out, so I was able to be there with him. So I'm sorry to anyone who wasn't with their loved one when it happened. But Jesus was very clearly there. And his eyes were like sapphires that day. And I remember saying to my friend Jan when he finally went home to the Lord, is that it? And she said, yes. And I said, is that the worst death can do? And she said, yes. <laughs> And I looked it right in the face and I said, I know where he's gone. And I knew where he'd gone. I don't know exactly where he's gone, but I do know he's with the Lord. And for weeks afterwards, my dad was a baker. I could smell bread being cooked. Other people could not smell it, but I could. And it was just that assurance. And as the Lord gave me quietly inside me one day, dead bakers don't cook bread. So he's getting the feast ready. And the song that I had in my heart as he died was this most wonderful, I don't know if it is a message as one, but it's the strife is over, the battle's won. It's a resurrection song. And I remember my dad singing it. So do not fear. He's right there with you at the last moment. Well done. Thank you. Um, my, my hope came true this morning. I, um, I said to Andy on, fr on Friday that I had felt the Spirit tell me to come back to the Methodist this week. I've been feeling very lost between churches, not really settled. And my, my reason for feeling lost here was this was our family church so the children grew up in this church Gary and I got married in this church and although we'd split separated I could still come felt a bit awkward but I could still come along but then when he passed away it felt horrible coming here because you were my family and I just felt out of place. But while we were singing the first few, <laughs> the last, Lord's My Shepherd, that was one of Gareth's favourites. Mm. And it was like, I'm home. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. 
Well, let's pray together. Lord, you, you promise us uh, so many things in your word. Um, and one thing you do promise is to, to hear us when we cry out to you. And sometimes we, we cry out and we don't know what it is we want to say. But you hear us still the same. And so for those souls that are crying out to you here this morning, trying to express the things that are a deep hurt, we thank you that you hear. But more than that, that you draw near. That you come as the comforter, you come as the one who will speak truth into our lives. And so we lay before you now the things that are, are troubling to us. And we ask, Lord God, shine your light. Shine your light in those dark places so that we might see clearly and know that our God is with us. Lord, we pray for people throughout the world who are suffering, who are mourning their losses, who are frightened, for those who've lost their lives in recent maritime disasters, Lord, those who are rich and those who have nothing. Lord, they're all your children. Pray that you would comfort those who are grieving. Continue to hold before you the people of Ukraine. And we pray for peace and justice in that land. Pray that you would, you would break the hearts of those who are hardened against that country, those who wish to wage war. And give them a heart of love, we pray. Lord, we pray for our own country. Where there is such a divide between those who have and those who have not. Lord, we ask for healing in our nation. We pray for justice in our nation. Justice of resources, justice of justice of opportunities. And we pray for our, the places where we live, our village here or wherever we might be. You tell us in your word, O oh Lord, to be salt and light, so show us how we can be salt and light in our communities. We pray for this church. We, we give you thanks for this church. The blessings we receive from being a part of this fellowship. But we pray too, Lord, that you would restore and renew the things that are broken here. Guide us through your Holy Spirit, we pray, to minister only in your power and only in the name of Jesus. We 
We ask your blessing upon our families, upon our homes. May we know the peace and joy and light of Christ. And so we offer you all these our prayers, in and through Jesus, in whom all our hope is found. Amen. One thing you, you will have noticed in the notices is that um, uh, there is a, a barbecue happening here on the 30th, is it, Nick? Nicky? It's on the 30th of, of uh, July, 30th of July. Um, so uh, Nick and Nicky uh, have been uh, working very hard in trying to um, uh, come up with some ideas, uh, some of which are new, some of which are not so new, uh, but good ideas about how we can um, grow our fellowship, our love for one another, our getting to know one another, our understanding of one another. Um, and so do come and, part, come and be a part of that and, and the other things that we'll be organizing in the coming months as well. Um, you'll notice that it's not quite half past 11. We're finishing uh, exceptionally early uh, for me. Um, but I, pardon? Oh, we're going to sing again, yes. But that means then that you have more time uh, to sit and uh, uh, share in fellowship uh, with tea and coffee and uh, biscuits and that sort of Take some time to speak this morning to somebody who you don't normally speak to, especially if you don't know that person's name. Go and find out what their name is and don't forget them to tell them yours. Okay? So you have a bit more extra time this morning to share together in fellowship and, uh, and friendship. We're going to close by singing a song which again is part of that um, song of hope and thanks and praise of God. Uh, this is Amazing Grace. Let's stand together. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in all wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Shines like the sun in all of his brilliance, the King of glory, the King above all. the 